Hey folks, I'm uh, set up in the uh, hay barn here at the, the farm. Fortunately, it's empty. Actually, we got a little bit of seed here to plant in a little while, but uh, it was a good place because it's raining, but I got a big door here to open up and get good lighting to show this install of the this monster motor right here, the Torquedo Ultralight 1103 AC. On this boat here, this is the Jackson U-Pick. I'm um, excited about this particular boat uh, for a couple reasons. Uh, the biggest one is that I'm going to do foot control steering on this setup um, and I'm going to keep the seat as far forward as I, I possibly can on it. So let me jump in and uh, I will show you each of the components needed to, to set this up and then we'll jump in and start rigging. So starting at the back of the boat here, we've already got the, the four bolt pattern of inserts. I'll pluck that out and stick the, uh, the mount on there. That'll be the easiest part for sure. Um, having that makes it real simple. Um, I will run the, the motor lift lines here through some tie down eyelets here, maybe also there. Lots of track on this boat. Um, it just routes your your motor lift line in a way that you're you don't have it cutting a corner and rubbing against a you know black pack or whatever whatever gear you have in this area. So tie down eyelets are always a good part of a Torquedo Ultralight install. So we've seen the motor and I got the motor lift bar and and steering triangle. I'll get all that on there. Um, the next part is and we have I got some of the um, the sliding foot pegs and the, the tracks that they will they will slide into. Um, how we're going to mount that is with a combination of these 90 degree mighty mount adapters. So we're going to use really just this plastic part of it. I won't use the the spring and the rest of it, but this part is is important, and I'll get some other quarter 20 stainless uh, hardware that I have to mount that in conjunction with this is going to be the interface with the track um, you know the the mighty bolt is going to go in the track and then it'll go through one one part of this and then we'll secure it with the low pro wing knob um, let's just go ahead and jump with one of these up to the front and I want to show you I'm going to put them, that's the idea, is that you have them all the way up there, which gets your weight, the angler weight forward, which makes it you know, a much more efficient boat in terms of propulsion. Gives you all this area for your gear storage. Uh, I'll probably get some horizontal rod storage set up with, uh, I don't know, some Omega Pro uh, rod holders. We'll figure it out, that out later, but the, the concept is we're building in the foot pegs to go right here. So your heels will kind of rest and slide in, in this area and you'll have the tracks there. So how we're going to run the, you know, I already have some of the, the Spectra cord on these. Um, how we run that is going to be interesting. This boat, the U-Pick is really designed uh, to be one that doesn't have hatches there's no water that should be able to get inside of it and we're going to keep it that way. We're not going to run the tubing through the hull. We're going to keep it all external. The way that we're doing that is we're going to use this, the, the regular tubing, but I'm going to secure it with these, these uh, P-clips. They're eighth inch, whereas this is 3 16th tubing uh, that really secures it good on either end. Uh, but I'm also going to, you know, in the middle section, I'll have the, the Gorilla Tape and where if, if I think that there is a place where a heel or, or gear is going to rub on it and it could be pulling it off, I have some of this adhesive, kind of like Marine Matter Sea Deck. This one is actually an old example of a Wilderness Systems. They sold it as Silent Traction System back in the day. I got some other pieces. We'll see if I need that. But that would just be a way to, you know, once I get the Gorilla Tape and the tubing on there, uh, to hide it so that, you know, as you're, and I haven't figured out exactly where I want to put it. Um, we'll figure it out. 
you know, it's just a way that if there's something that's going to rub against it, it just keeps it in a little bit of a recess. So, um, what else can I tell you? I always, I don't know that I'm going to need this. I, I almost always end up using a four inch gear track on a Torquedo install, but there's so much track on this boat. One right down the center the whole way, down the sides, up at the front, here at the back. Lots of track, lots of options, so I probably won't need this. Um, I've already got a Yak Attack Torquedo throttle mount. That one I've already uh, put on this set up here. Um, I will take the seat out here in a minute and just give me access to the entire hull so I can view that, that set up. And then obviously there's no... Uh, no, no install is complete until you get all the uh, all the stickers done on it. Even got some old vintage kayak bass fishing ones. Those will look good on this boat. So, all right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, let's start with the um, with getting our sliding foot pegs on there. I'm gonna want this track to be right there, and I got my two holes already drilled there that line up with two contact points on the track and I'll show you what we're doing with the the 90 degree mighty mount adapters um, not using all parts and I will tell you that I take this part off I don't need the spring We'll put those aside. Maybe I'll need them for another another project. Um, this one, I actually am going to use this bolt because it's got a nice, you know, squared away um, fit into this square hole. So the way that I'm going to use it, um, <clears throat> I think what I want to do is I'm going to push it through there, and I got the right size bolt here the right size nut little quarter quarter inch locking nut this is going to be sticking out too far to um, you know to let that sliding foot peg slide in there it's going to slide forward and hit it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this to uh, to the bandsaw or grinder or something in the shop next door and I'm just going to cut that uh, you can just get the right length hardware, but I'm going to use I'm going to use what I already got for this application. So let me take care of that for four different um, contact points, and then we'll come back and we'll finish this up. Okay, I'm here in the the shop and going to get my vice grips on there, and I've actually measured the right depth. I'm gonna Get that on there, um, and then marked it with the the tape. It, this is seeming complicated to some of you, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, you could you could absolutely just go to the hardware store and get the right length bolt and stick it in there. Uh, for me, right now, using the tools I have is more convenient than uh, <clears throat> I guess going to the hardware store. So, so that's what I'm doing. take that to the grinder, clean up so I can get the, uh, the threads deburred so I can get my nut on there. Okay, looking good. Um, I will say that before I um, jumped into this. I had been working with the the folks at Jackson Kayak and we are working on a a steering kit so you don't have to do all this grinding and custom work. Um, eventually we will have a a foot control steering kit for the UPIC uh, but this is just me I guess sort of being impatient. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to get this thing on the water uh, but a steering kit is in the works so look forward to that soon. All right, so I already put one 
track in already. And what I want to show you is if you look down in there, the, you know, the, the foot peg sliding in there is not hitting that. That's what we were going for. Um, when you're, when you're putting these in, it's difficult to get your, you know, to get the, uh, adjustable wrench. You can't get a socket in there because it's in a channel. Um, if you hold the, the nut on there and you actually spin this part because it has that square <clears throat> back part of the carriage bolt, if you spin this, that's how you tighten it on there. So let's go ahead and get it on there with the mighty bolt and the low pro wing knob. So each one of these pairs up. Slide it through there, put that on there. And we'll just slide it into the track. Hopefully I have the right length low pro wing knob. We'll find out here in a second. <clears throat> yep, that's gonna work. Just tighten that. really want it snug because I'm going to be putting a lot of torque on there. So <clears throat> yeah, these were the, the one inch ones. So one inch length, half inch head, and the low pro wing knobs are just the low pro wing knobs. All right, so that's it. So we got one side ready to go. I'll go ahead and do the other and uh, then we'll figure out what we're doing with this spectra cord. This stuff, this is what you want. There's cable. You can certainly run with cable. Um, but for really the smoothest steering, the spectra cord is what you want. A um, <clears throat> bunch of different companies that make steering kits like Bonafide and Wilderness Systems use this stuff. Um, Innovative Sportsman actually sells this stuff by the foot. So very good, durable, and you can, you know, you can reuse it. You can tell that I've had this on a different boat before and I'll undo that and reuse it. Whereas if it's cable, you, you crimp it and hope you had it right because that's where it's going to be. This stuff you can reuse and it's just really smooth. So, all right, <clears throat> get two more of these. I'm going to do the other side. All right, I think I know what I want to do with the, the tubing here. I got the little P-clip on there. As it comes off of the sliding foot peg here, I think I'm gonna have the, the tubing. I'm gonna try this anyways. I think I'm gonna get it right in that little groove and I can use the, the P-clip here to secure it. I gotta turn that one around, but to secure it maybe right there and I could run this channel and cover it up with the, this Gorilla Tape um, just right up to the edge and then downward all the way, I gotta move the seat to do it, but all the way back here. I'm gonna come to here and then it's gonna come top side across here and I'm gonna come right back to this, this part right here. I'm going to turn this around so you can see where it needs to be. When you get the mount on there, generally you want your attachment points, or at least where it's where the uh, tubing is leaving the back of the boat, at approximately the width of the steering triangle for maximum rotation. So I might bring them in a little bit narrower. I think I can bring them out to there and there. We'll see how that looks here in a little bit. But first thing I gotta do is remove that seat and drill, let's see, pilot hole in there and get that P-clip on there and then start running tube.
I will point out that I have removed these, these sliding foot pegs that can tighten down. They were right in here and they're, they're meant to be stationary. Um, it's just another idea that if you didn't care about getting the weight as far forward in the boat and you wanted an easier way to, to do all of this is that you could, you could simply drill a hole in this, run the spectra in a loop around that and attach it and have that be your sliding. I don't know how, it's something I may try later, but I don't know how smooth that would be in this track, but it's an option. It's another idea. Um, the downside of that is that, you know, the, the track is, it's only so far this way and you need, you know, a good bit of range of sliding this to get the motor rotation. That means your seat is further back. So that's not what I want. I like it up here, it's far forward, but I'm holding on to these just in case that may be a good option later. So um, I'm gonna take my tubing and I'm just trimming the end off just like we do when we run it through the hull. I wanna mushroom that out and I'm just doing that with a lighter and I'm gonna just tap that a little bit and that gives it a little bit of a lip right there so it, it won't pull out. <clears throat> um, I'm going to place it initially, I think it's going to go there. Let's get this P-clip on there. So you can see I'm just snapping that in place on the end and get it right up to the edge. I'm gonna pinch that down. This is a 1 8 inch inner diameter P-clip and a 3 16th um, tubing. So it's, it doesn't really match and that's intentional. So it's a really tight fit. So let's put this there. So it's lined up with the channel and I'm going to put a little, so I'm making the boat bounce around, a little pilot hole, very small one with the, the drill bit diameter less than the, less than what I'm going to be putting in there. So maybe I get it started first. Yeah, I go get my Phillips head. I'll get that started, and then I'll put the put it on the P clip. Yep, that, that's gonna be good. I, you know, it's different with every boat where where you decide that you want the line. This one I just thought, you know, that does sort of tuck in there. And the next move is to get, and I'm not going to do it quite yet, but a, a long strip and maybe, maybe a third, eh, probably about that much of the tape all the way along. We'll see. I'll play around with it, see what looks good, but that's... That's a secure start for the tube. I'm gonna keep running it backwards and put a couple more P-clips in as I go, just to keep it secure. That is where I started with the tube and I've already covered it with the, the Gorilla Tape in the first section. There's another P-clip. I come all the way back here. There's another one at the end of the track. I come top side and right here I put another one. And then I'm making a turn and coming back to this last one right here. So I got one matching on either side. So I finished this cutting the length out and that'll go on there. And I think this is, this is the area where I'm going to use that, that um, marine mat or silent traction system. I just, I don't like having it raised here and having it something that fishing line or, or lures or something can 
can catch on. So I'm gonna surround it on both sides by that adhesive material. I think it's gonna look good as well. So I think along in here, as long as it doesn't interfere with track, I don't I don't know. I don't think I think I can get T bolts and everything else I need to in there without just because it has has that nice little groove that it sits down in. I think it'll be fine. So we'll find out. I'm gonna finish this one and then I'll start working on the uh, the other side and then we'll do the the traction pads. All right, I've already run the spectra cord through one. Got another length here. I'm gonna just slowly start feeding it through the other. I'll show you when we get up to the other end how you tie it on to the, uh, the sliding foot peg. They can get bunched up in there and sometimes you have to use, I don't have it, but you know, a lighter to open that up, put a little screw in and, and just a wood screw, stick it in there and it, it kind of flares out the head so that you know right right where the mushroom mushrooming out of the end of the tube is that can also close in so putting that screw in there and just screwing it it flares it out so you can get the tubing in there you can get the spectra cord in the tubing easier take this out so I can show you exactly what you're doing Give myself enough to work with here um, you're just looping it through the hole and for lack of a better term it's a little, little noose knot so you're just gonna wrap it around you know you start back and you're wrapping back in the, the same direction where you made the loop and probably give it I don't know six or seven turns doing a couple extra turns is also a good idea on the on the back end just because you get to add more line to it and it gives you a little bit extra to work with if you have a breakage that you know you still have a length that's long enough all right I've taken that last turn and I've taken it through that little loop that I've made with the spectra cord and I'm just going after this original loop back up here. Let me come in on that real good so I can show you what I'm doing. All right, so come on, focus. All right, that last turn went through this loop and now I have the tag end and I'm taking it through that loop. It's gonna be a tight fit, but it'll, you get it in there, you'll be in good shape. If you need to get some uh, needle nose pliers to pull that loop out and make it big enough that you can jam that tag in through. So that's gonna be nice snug and it needs to be. You got three horsepower of electric propulsion tugging on that um, to clean it up again me with the gorilla tape on everything so I got these extra pads and I'm looking at where I have all this um, you know gorilla tape over the tubing and I just I want to clean that up as much as I can that looks like a good fit there I'm just gonna do what I can to trim it up. 
make it look nice. I want to leave this open. I just want to border this on one side. Um, I'm going to just sort of crease it, and and I'm not I'm not just burying it. I'm I'm going to create a strip along this side, and then something along this side, such that you're still going to see this ridge, but it's it's at least going to be somewhat smoothed over. If you know what I mean. Good. I go ahead and peel that off. Stick it on there. And it just just protects it so that you know if there's something that comes along and hits it, it's it's at least tucked in there. I'm gonna do another one on the inside. All right, this is probably the easiest part of the entire install. I'm just taking these little placeholder plastic screws out of the molded in brass threaded inserts. And we're gonna put our, our mounting bracket on this and then we'll finish up and I'll show you how the the motor lines motor lift lines need to be run for the best possible you know lifting leveraged you know, type setup all right there's a variety of hardware that comes with the 1103 based on what you know whether you're drilling holes in the hull and you need backing on the inside or whether it's an easier setup like this that you can just drop these Allen bolts right into it with the washers. That's why the the lines the this one is the reverse lock and then this is for the the motor lift. Um, they're already on there, but I'll show you the completed setup here in just a minute. All right, we're getting near the end. Uh, I went ahead and put the rock guard on there. The Innovative Sportsman makes a rock guard with the grass cutter here uh, for the 1103. And I've, I've actually put the, the weedless prop on there. I like that one better than the standard one it comes with. Um, I think it's more durable. I think it sheds grass. And I don't think there's any loss in power. Some of the engineers said that, yeah, it, it shouldn't be as fast. I haven't noticed a difference. So I did want to talk about the different, the order in which you put things on this pipe. Now it's going to come to you with a ring clamp on there with quick release hardware already in there to keep this profile from popping up. You don't want this rattling around. I got that rock guard on there um <clears throat> actually I take it back it's not going to come with the quick release hardware i'm telling you put the quick release hardware on the ring clamp what it's going to come with is this regular hardware and i'm going to tell you to use that on this on the steering triangle i'll tell you why in a second um i don't have the, the little thing of grip paste with me but the grip paste is important. You only want it on the part of the shaft where the steering triangle is going to be. Its purpose is to to make it so when you're really slamming hard on a turn with a three horsepower motor going 6.5 to 7.8 miles per hour that it doesn't shift and slip on there. And that grip paste does do something to help with that for sure all right so i got the ring clamp on there ring clamps can do a number of different things i'm going to turn this around so it doesn't catch any grass or anything um it, it can be it can hold the motor lift bar 
right in here. Uh, it can hold the, the profile down. It can basically be a, a depth adjustment of how deep your motor is in the water by putting it above the, the black pivot drum. Um, so I'll need to grab it here in a second. But basically, it's a multi, um, it, it's, it's multiple uses for the ring clamp. And right now, I'm just using it to, to make sure that the, the profile, hydrodynamically efficient airplane wing looking profile is secured down on top of the motor. Um, <clears throat> next thing I'm going to do is grab the, the, um, the black pivot drum because we're going to, there's a couple different ways you can do it. Um, you can have the steering triangle on top of the black pivot drum or below it. And whether you have it above it or below it, this part is already always facing the black pivot drum. Let me grab that and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So the pivot drum just holds the, the motor in the, the bracket there. And we got one ring clamp on there already. We're gonna take the cable, stick it up through the bottom of there. If we had a kayak where the steering cables came out of the hull, somewhere below the surface or the level where the mount is, you know, the, the mounting surface. In other words, if you had tubes coming out down below, not above like we do, but down below, you would want to put the steering triangle on before this black pivot drum. But we're going to have ours topside, so I'm going ahead and putting it on there. And we've had a lot of folks complain, oh, it's really stiff to get on there. Trust me, you get it out on the water and you start steering with your feet, it'll be fine. Your legs are strong, they can handle it. Um, really that tight tolerance is, is something that, that makes it efficient when it, when it is running. So uh, it is certainly a tighter tolerance than the, the 403. Okay, so because we have the, the steering triangle on top, we're having this part facing um, the black pivot drum. If you put it on this way, uh, the wings get low enough and they actually strike the, the bracket there. So you always want the tube part facing the black pivot drum as you put that on there. But before I even do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that regular hardware that we took out of the, the ring clamp below and I'm going to use it to put the, the motor lift bar. All right, I'm just I'm putting on this on very lightly, and what I have ready is a driver with a socket that is eight millimeter, and then I have a uh, the Allen key that is a four. So we'll go ahead and get these, get this on there, slide it up through there. do this without tipping over everything. I'm using sawhorses and the kayak itself has a keel and it likes to wobble. And then I went and put my camera on top of it. That was smart. Alright, since this is such a low, a low slung boat, I'm going to go down as far as I can possibly go, which the limiting factor is actually on this one is the, um, the motor lift bar. So that's all the way down and I'm looking down on it centered and we're going to go ahead and tighten her up. Oh, and I forgot. You know what? I'm going to go dig around. I'm going to get the grip paste, put it on there just so I can show you what that is. What's very important though, is that you get the grip paste in the section where <clears throat> the steering triangle is gonna be, but not where the pivot drum is gonna be, because that will actually ruin the smoothness of your steering. 
its its purpose is to provide a friction coefficient. Friction coefficient is good for a steering triangle, bad for the thing that is designed to pivot. So let's go get that grip paste and we'll get it on there. All right, glad I went back for the grip paste. It actually says uh, carbon assembly paste, but this stuff's used on like a bicycle seat post. Um, but it, we decided to use it on this just because it was a good application. But I went back and I realized, ooh, I have another ring clamp. The reason I'm gonna get that in the mix here um, is that I'm gonna put it above the, the black pivot drum because I think what I want, I'm gonna leave the steering triangle up a little bit, but I'm gonna use this to set the, the height of the motor as shallow as I can. Cause I'm gonna do a lot of river fishing with this, this setup. So I'm gonna put that other ring clamp there as a means to, to basically set the, um, the depth of the propeller fairly shallow. So a lot of folks wanna know, all right, what's the right depth um, to, you know, what's the right level to have the, the propeller? I will tell you that the prop on the 1103 is much less prone to the, the cavitation or ventilation is really the right word for it that you see in the 403. However, it is a, it's a longer propeller, especially the standard one. The, the weedless one I have here is a smaller footprint. Um, but you know, so it, it kind of balances out. I would say with the 403, if you have the top of the propeller within uh, four inches of the surface, um, certainly no shallower, you're in good shape. Uh, with the 1103, you can get it a lot closer. It's, it's something like an inch and a half or two inches before it really starts to pull air down to it. So I'm gonna play around with it once I get it on the water, but I'm gonna go ahead and set it. All right, steering triangle is going on and we're gonna tighten that in just a second. I suppose if you want, you can just smear it on the inside of the steering triangle and that would work. I've also done it where you, you put it on the pipe here. Either way, it will get the job done. You don't need a lot. You just need to get a, a ring of it all the way around and it'll be good to go. Okay. Got that on there. Going to wipe the rest on my blue jeans. And we're going to slide that down there. And I will go ahead and finish tightening it on there. And then I'll show you the, the setup for the motor lift line. Where that grip paste was so it gets a nice tight fit. I will point you in the direction. Um, I've been able to to lift it. It's a tough lift. I had Scylla Johnson who is on Team Torquedo. She's, uh, she's mighty, but she is small and she was able to lift it. But we've had some folks that have said, you know, people rigging boats. Um, Matt Trucks in particular was like, I don't, I want to do something better. And that's cool. I love having people do aftermarket stuff. Um, if you can check out Matt Truck's YouTube channel, The Plastic Hull. He does a great job with all sorts of very cool Torquedo hacks. One of which is a very cool double pulley system that makes it um, super easy to lift this. It's not super, super easy now to lift it, but with his setup, it becomes super easy. Uh, he uses two double Harkin pulleys and whereas this goes, you know, up and back once to make it easy to lift, his does that twice. And it just, it means that you're, you're able to lift it with a lot less effort. So we'll take a look at how the lines are run so you can see that and know how to rig at next. All right, I'm gonna move this motor cable out of the way a little bit just to show you the path that the 
that the motor lift comes forward. I'm going to show you a little bit later how it goes through some of the track. I actually have it through the uh, tie down, the Yak Attack tie down eyelet, which will be in the track that I've already set further forward. But it's going to come in in this direction, come to this little metal loop here. You're going to go through there. It's going to go up to, you're going to put one of the um, one of the carabiners in the top of the motor lift bar and then it's going to loop through that and then come back down to the other carabiner which you're going to tie through you're going to tie it on like that and then you're just going to clip it on there and when you're you know when you're taking it on and off it, and basically the the motion that you're you're looking to do is to draw it down like that to lift it up. So that double double action makes it easier than if we went just straight up to it and pulled it down. So doubling it back helps it. Um, when you want to take it off, it's fairly simple. All you do is you lift forward on the carabiner and just undo that. Then you're going to undo your steering cables. And then finally the reverse lock, which keeps it, you know, when you want to back up, you got to lock it in place. Um, you take that off. Quick release, really tighten there, and off comes the motor. So I've already placed the the throttle on the left side of the of the seat but on the right side that's where I like to use have the motor lift so in the 403 I would have the cleat facing the front but with the 1103 I have it facing the back here's why you have this u-shaped uh, accessory that is track mounted and we have two Phillips head screws and we have two track discs in there. I'm going to go ahead and tighten those up. Um, this is where the, the line comes first when it comes from the back of the boat, from the motor lift um, loop at the back of the boat. So I get that tightened on. It comes from the back of the boat, takes a 180 degree turn, and then comes back to this backward facing cleat. So you have a doubling back of of the motor lift cord at the front and the back of the boat to help lift what is a very heavy motor. You can put the red ball. I've also seen folks find uh, pull start T-shaped T handles. That's another hack. Uh, but this is enough to really give it a tug, flatten it down there, and the motor's up. You've got it over the end, so I got it. So we're getting ready to, to launch here. I'm here with my buddy Jake Harshman. He's got his rig right here. I got the U pick with the 1103 on there and I got all my gear. Uh, the river's coming up. It's really, like it's been up and it's gonna be a challenge for sure. Um, but it's good that we got a three horsepower motor to hold us in the in position. Uh, we're gonna have a, we're gonna be out during the spike where the river level is coming up and it's gonna start to curve back down. But it's, it's gonna be up quite a bit and I think we're gonna have some muddy water. Here are a couple muddy water options. I got a uh, half ounce uh, jackhammer with the palmetto bugs. Nice big profile there. Um, this is a spinner bait of my own creation that I call the, the twin spin. And I got a, um, that is a Z-Man diesel minnow and redfish toad. It's probably my favorite soft plastic swim bait profile and color. Um, this is what I was, we were getting them on a um, couple days ago up here, Lucky Craft Jerkbait uh, Pointer 100 in Aurora Green Perch. This one's obviously pretty beat up. 
uh, and then I got the micro uh, finesse jig from Z-Man with a double wire weed guard. We're going to be dropping it in a lot of different you know, brush piles and tight little eddies. I do have the, uh, the drop shots with the, uh, with the, I think it was a little over, I think it's a 4.2 inch uh, version. There's a shorter version which I usually throw, but because it's muddier water, I'm going with the bigger one. And I got it slathered up with scent. I already got it on there. Hmm. All right, let's go. All right, moving along pretty good. I've had to readjust where I have the throttle. Just getting used to a new boat it takes a little bit. So we've pulled into a shoreline eddy. It's pretty big. There aren't a whole lot of eddies because the river is, is up so much. Um, this one's pretty sizable, you know, it's probably a 20 foot area right here where the water's just swirling around. Um, I picked up, I had one bite off the bank right where two different converging currents come together. And it, it actually, let's see if I still have the tail of the bait, or I cut the head off of that, that four inch drop shots. Uh, because when I set the hook, I, f I felt that I had a fish, and I get, you know, I get the bait back, and you can see that he had the back half of the tail. So that to me says that instead of throwing a bait that big, I got to throw one that big. So I've shortened the trailer, given them a smaller profile that they got to take the whole thing in their mouth. Ooh. Ooh, I finally hooked up right in the middle of a big log jam. Oh, how am I going to get this fish around to me? I was actually getting ready to lift it up over the, uh, here, over the branch. And this fish came up and smashed it right at the surface. I actually saw it come up and swirl on the, uh, on the finesse jig. That was pretty cool. Um... I've moved from the wide part of the eddy down to the real skinny part towards the end here. And there's a, a big lay down here and a jumble. It's, it's a tough spot to hold on. A bigger boat, like a jet boat, couldn't get to this spot. I mean, they could get to it, maybe hold out there with the trolling motor and cast in. But in terms of sitting on this spot, I think only a kayak and only a, you know, a really agile one like this is is ideal for hitting this spot right here so nice fish we'll get a measurement on this guy here in a second I'll probably get a weight on him he's hefty <laughs> all right measured him on my vintage hog trough this thing is ancient I don't know how I didn't break it I haven't upgraded to the catch board. Need to do that soon. But uh, got him closed mouthed right at, and I, and I had him on the boga um, at three pound three ounces. And this 18 and three quarter inch with the closed mouth, small mouth, we're going to put this beauty back in. Almost 19 inch uh, Susquehanna small mouth out of the slop. Shoreline eddies and uh, finesse jigs. We'll go ahead and get this guy back in there. So it's always useful to return to the scene of a crime when you catch a good fish to start your pattern and really you're just going there to make observations about that location and the brush you're seeing right behind me that's where he was. And, you know, that's an obvious observation, you know, big, big logs. Um, the other thing is if you look back upstream, you can see that the eddy going that way is very wide, but it's narrowing down because right here next to me, I have current blowing through. And if we look downstream, it really pinches off. Like there's, there's no width to the eddy that way. And, and it, it, in a, it basically ends here. The current pushes in and seals it off. And yes, there's smaller eddies down that way, but that's where he was. So 
go to the spots where you catch your good fish, make your observations, then you can start patterning based on that. I, this may be a catfish or something, I don't know. This, oh, what did I get? Oh yeah, big old catfish. Interesting. Oh. oh, this is gonna be stinky. Oh, you're a stinky, stinky, stinky catfish. I got you. Oh. coming up super fast and I guess they're jumping up in all that grass to eat whatever has been their terrestrial food you know whatever used to be on land is now underwater and they're they're moving up into that flooded you know used to be dry land and chewing that's what they do when the river comes up it's a good one just missed one that ripped the, the tail of it off, which is unusual because the elastic is so tough. Um, you know, he, he had just this back part. So I'm putting another one on, but I'm gonna show you. All I'm doing is I'm taking my NRS pilot out and folding it over there. Yeah, just like that. Um, and just cutting it so it's a much shorter profile so hopefully it doesn't happen again but you're taking something that's you know 4.2 inches is what that package has i think it's the trick shots and you're putting it on the finesse jig I gotta close that gap just a hair but yeah, you want to, they're nipping at the tail. You definitely want to make it a smaller profile so they got to take the whole thing. He was right on the current seam and he jammed it. So that's a good looking profile, short. And we'll go ahead and get the scent in the, the ribs there. They'll be ready to Drop right back down in there. Hopefully we get that one that I just missed. So part of pattern development is that you have a, a recipe for how you're gonna catch the fish. And that includes very specific locations that you have in mind. You don't just fish every little eddy as you come to it. You're jumping to specific ones. And, and really specifically what we're looking for is you find the biggest eddy and we got one up there a big tree that's creating the eddy up there and then you come downstream and you find out where it pinches off and that's what we're going to do here we're going to dive in underneath these underhanging branches and see if we can get that last little bit of, of calm water before it pinches off and you got current really really close to the bank this is a very tight pocket to get in there but it looks nice sometimes the smallest eddies Good for one fish. That's one good one. Right on the current seam there. Just give me a little jumping action. That was the one I just trimmed to be smaller so I wouldn't miss them. Thank you. 
tossing it up into the brushy slop and letting it kind of linger down in that stuff. Kind of slop punching with the wire weed guard. That's pretty good. Another nice one. Turning on in this eddy. Long, skinny eddy. Putting it right on the bank. Right. Right where it's flooding. So with the river as high as it is, I've really not had the chance to kind of hot dog around just cause it's, it's a whole lot of flow coming down. And uh, we got a nice eddy here. I just wanted to check out the foot control steering in terms of the turning radius we have, I feel secure enough here because there's enough calm water um, that I don't feel unsteady like I did out there. It's really a high volume of water coming down, but let's uh, let's whip it around and see what what it'll do. How quickly the uh, turning radius is. concept of doing this was really having my feet and the steering as far forward in the boat so I feel good that I've accomplished that you know and the layout actually works for me so 